All right, everyone. Hello and welcome to this month's PSR podcast. Uh, this is the, the May podcast, but we're um, we're doing one for April as well. So this is kind of like a double episode. We're going to cover things from April and May. Um, and I guess worth noting is this one's going to be a little bit pre-recorded. So um, if if, you, if you're interacting with chat, it's not like we're ignoring you. We're just we're doing this a little bit earlier because we can't actually make the time. So just worth noting and with me are my fellow hosts iron hello and tucker larap hello and this month we have special guest tts for life well hello it's good to be here cool to have you all right so we'll just get right into it i guess um first thing we have to talk about is um i think last week it was uh the summer games done quick schedule was released the games list or the games list rather yeah um, and we have two Pokemon runs to look forward to in um, SGDQ, which is going to be um, late June to early July. Um, we have TTS, who's here in running Black and White 2, um, potentially challenge mode if incentive is met. And we have Thomas Patrick, or T-Pat, who's going to be running uh, Teal Mask for Scarlet Violet. Yeah, it's great to see... Uh... Both these runs. I think challenge mode... I think White 2's been in GDQ before the main event. I'm not sure if it was challenge mode, though. Uh, I know, so, I know so, Pulse was at GDQ X. Yeah, okay. so the history of White 2 that I'm aware of is... And I'm going to double-check this on the side as well. But it was first in... I think it was EGDQ 2018. With um, Trev with person, right? Trev, Trev person, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So he was the first one, I think, to ever get it on the GDQ stage. And then... Um, Pulse did a challenge mode run, I think, for, as you said, a GDQX in, like, 2019 or something like that. So it's pretty exciting. It's been quite a while since uh, White 2 has been on the main stage of GDQ, so I'm looking forward to being able yeah. to show it off to everyone. It's very exciting. It was <laughs> it was definitely a rush of adrenaline on games day, uh, or on games list day, <laughs> when I got that... the email, because I was rushing to try to get to the list, because I just saw it went up, and I got the email first, I, and I just... <laughs> it's the biggest adrenaline shock you can ask is getting into GDQ, so. Yeah, congrats for that. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and I think T-Pad, it'll be his first time running on the main stage. Uh, he's done a lot of hotfix shows. He's been on couches, uh, so this will be yes. his first time. So congrats Correct. to him on that, and it's really exciting to see Teal Mask up there, because that's a category, I guess, you and I both um, worked on quite a bit, had Bob. Um, yep, yep. I'm curious to see which main he'll be using. I know he, when he was doing runs, he was running the Espathra route. We'll see if he switches to Metacham for this I one. I know he asked for the notes for Metacham recently, so I think, okay, I think maybe. he said he wanted to do Metacham because it's like... Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. More content. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> lots of... Chances to miss. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be awesome if he if he uh, no matter which which route he does, uh, it'll be great to see that on there as well. So, all right, congrats to both of you guys on on that. Um, we're looking forward to seeing the event uh, this summer. Uh, when we get the schedule, we'll, uh, we'll 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 talk about that in the podcast as well. Um, a couple other things. Um, we had the Fire Red Leaf Green tournament uh, just conclude. Um, congratulations to Ananan. I believe that is two years in a row that he's won the tournament. Yes, yes. Um, so big congrats to him. We had yeah, Randall right. Randall in second and uh, Chippy in third. I don't know if it's twice in a row, but he's definitely run. I thought, I thought it was Wade. I thought it was Wade last year, right? He's definitely won twice. I, I know that. But... Yeah, it was either last year or the year before, actually. Yeah. But yeah, congratulations congrats. to him. Much, much deserves. Um, and I guess the last thing we have to talk about is the Let's Go Pikachu in EV tournament uh, for this for this year. As one tournament ends, we have another one starting up soon. Submissions or uh, signups are, co are currently open. Um, they're going to be closing uh, May 25th at 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, there's a uh, there's a Discord that you can join for the tournament that should be somewhere in the Switch server um, that will give you all the details for that. And I guess we can just move into the focus topic for this episode. Yep, is... and, uh, yeah, and yeah. we have a pair of runs to talk about, both uh, by TTS. Um, main one right here is the black and white one, any percent record, uh, which is actually a tie. Uh, if you want to get into that TTS, uh, you did get a 
sub 310 to 309.54. Yeah, so I started running black white one after kind of getting fed up with not getting the times that I wanted in white two. I had finally PB'd in white two and got that uh, second place 309 run after God knows how many months of just not getting the run that I wanted in. So to finally have gotten that was a good stopping point for me. So I wanted to take a break from that and I went and started running black, white one. So black, white one is, you know, it's very similar to black, white two. So it was kind of in my wheelhouse and stuff. And it was very easy for me to kind of transfer the, at least the game knowledge that I had from uh, black, white two to black, white one. It was kind of annoying though, finding out some of the really annoying nuances, like the, uh, the order of items that go in your bag is reversed between black, white one and two, which is, really oh God. really weird and took a lot of <laughs> breaking muscle memory to try to get used to like repels being at the top of your bag instead of at the bottom after uh buying them and stuff but uh after some trial and tribulation i finally uh settled on my manips that i'm really happy with to uh pull off this record run uh i was having a lot of trouble with um finding a good movement on route three at the end because the issue with uh, Manep and Black White 1 is uh, the encounter grass works a little differently between Black White 1 and 2 and it's a lot more gruesome in Black White 1 for trying to go encounterless especially when uh, picking up the candy grass I uh, spent way too many nights trying to figure out <laughs> movement that would get me that candy without uh, mm -hmm. encounters because of all the variability with uh, picking it up and Route 3 is also just a really challenging route to hold Manip on because uh, the majority of the route, or at least the latter half of it, has you moving downwards towards the camera, and that just doesn't give you a lot of time to react to different like visual cues that you may set up for yourself to uh, do particular movements so that you don't uh, break the nip. But uh, overall, uh, I think the fights went pretty decent in my record run. Um, the early game was definitely uh, really good. Uh, one strategy that I did um, elect to adapt over previous black white one runs uh, was how you handle Lenora so a lot of people tend to deal with Lenora by um, by basically setting up uh, one uh, workup to <laughs> to weaken or to set yourself up sorry to um, take out both herdier and watchhog but the problem with the uh, Lenora in particular is that uh, the Watchhog uh, has Hypnosis, uh, which is a really trolly move, so a lot of runners will equip a, a, a Chesto Berry to deal with that. Uh, but another problem is that because Lenora's signature move is Retaliate, um, that means the Watchhog, who comes out second, has Retaliate, uh, which means that if Watchhog chooses to click Retaliate as soon as it comes out, it deals a lot of damage to you and you almost don't survive it unless you're pretty much at near full. The, it does at least like three fourths of your total HP. So uh, it makes the fight really sketchy if you aren't going into Watchtower with high HP, or at least you're always guaranteed to have to burn that turn to heal to full basically so that you don't uh, knock yourself out to retaliate, but you also open yourself up to uh, you know, hypnosis and a bunch of other trolley stuff since that Watchtower is faster than you. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. I hate that fight. So yeah, much. it's it's a pretty rough fight, and it doesn't help that Lenora also leads a herder deer that is um, about as much of a unit as yours is, because it's also adamant. And because gym leaders have some decent IVs, you know, it's pretty, almost pretty evenly matched between um, what Lenora's herder deer does to you and what you do to it. Uh, but um, there's a new idea going around. There's always been kind of a meme about using Lilliput's ability pickup to pick up a King's Rock, which is pretty funny because it would uh, stack with bite to give you a 40% chance to flinch. Uh, actually, holding it. actually, it doesn't do that. If, if a move already has a flinch chance, it doesn't even add oh, a flinch chance. Oh, it doesn't chance. do that? Oh, then yeah. why are people talking uh -huh. about the King's Rock being such a good item? <laughs> I've been baited. I never bothered with the King's Rock. It's always been kind of a meme thing to consider yeah. using pickup to pick it up. But, um... This still probably has some good edge cases, right? With like, you know, having to do enough damage and not being able to use bite, but still having a chance to flinch. Yeah, right, the thing with but... King's Rock is like, it, it is effective on like, a few like, grunt fights, but like, you do eventually just like, need to take it off. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's not 
it's not completely necessary at all. Like if King's Walk is like an extremely like bottleneck thing for like mid depth searching, so like you kind of just like it's kind of a luxury if you do it at all. And I don't think TTS you did that. No, I didn't do I, that. I didn't bother with uh, a King's Rock minute because uh, there's just not a lot of fights that would take advantage of it anyway. Because most things you just one shot anyway. So there's not a lot of places where you don't one shot something and are really like would benefit from a flinch. And the amount of minute effort that it takes to pick up the King's Rock is quite a lot. Because basically what you have to do is you have to encounter or start a battle um, whether that's trainer or encounter on a very certain primary RNG frame. So that takes a lot of effort to try to make that work. Um, the only one I know who has actually bothered to route a King's Rock is Rebentus. He has um, a level up minute with a King's Rock. I think more for the meme than anything. Um, he hasn't actually done any runs with uh, that level up that he's routed out. He got distracted by other stuff. But uh, yeah, and I also know that Cram did it, but Cram only did like a week of runs but you know that is right because uh, yeah i was going to circle back to um cram's run in particular because the other thing um that cram did was uh kind of circling way back now to the lenora fight <laughs> um is uh using an x speed on lenora so some runners would buy an x speed as like a safety precaution to kind of back up if things were kind of falling apart against Watchhog. Uh, like you got put back to sleep after already burning up your chest berry. So what I did was um, I committed to using the X speed, which is also what Cram did, which was basically commit to using the X speed and setting up to just one shot Watchhog and take care of it, no problem. So that has a lot of benefits and risks to it. Um, the big benefits are basically uh, you don't have to kill Snivy in the double fight against the uh, two young schoolgirls outside of the like daycare on Route uh, 3. Because uh, a lot of runners normally uh, what they do is they kill Snivy with your little pup on that fight in order to get more experience for little pup so it's not split between little pup and Snivy. But the problem is, is that if you let Snivy get the experience on the second life card because you basically use it to kill one of the or not life card they're for lines they're, they're the little versions so basically you use both Lillipup and Snivy to take out one of the per wines and then you would sack your Snivy and then uh, take care of the other one so you always burn a turn trying to kill Snivy but that gets you level 20 for Watchhog, which makes the fight a little bit safer in terms of your offensive damage rules. But you can skip um, doing that if you do the X speed. Uh, however, the downside of it is because with X speed, uh, you're basically dedicating yourself to one-shotting Watchhog instead of trying to deal with anything else. So your best move to do that is a takedown after two workups. Uh, and if you don't get that level 20 before Lenora, um, Watchhog does drop to a 14 and 16 range, which on top of the 85% takedown accuracy doesn't make the odds really great to have a good time past Lenora. But if you do land and get the range, then it's pretty free sailing. Uh, I think I mathed out about nine-ish seconds of time save. A lot of the time save just comes from if you commit to not taking the time to sack Snivy, it just makes the double fight a lot faster. Um, and you don't get better top end fights, but in my experience, it felt like I got consistently better fights. So I think the trade off was really good for me, and I think it was um, definitely worth it considering in the end, I did end up tying the record. Um, that is not to say that my early game overall was very fantastic though. Uh, versus Skoa, I was quite behind through the early game. I was even up to a minute behind, um, up to Clay, I believe it was, because his early game and his record is just absolutely insane. There's only like really two big blemishes on Skoa's record run, which is basically um, the fact that he died to Enz Karakosta, which is the second to last fight. 
and taking a death there eats up, I think it's about 40 seconds off of his gold at least. I think that's what the math is. My gold or his gold, I can't remember. I have a whole spreadsheet of times and I forget where my numbers are coming from. But it, it definitely ate up quite a significant chunk of time. Um, so I got free time save from that. But the other big time save that I got was in the plasma skip. So uh, I know we've talked about it on the podcast um, previously. I think Skola had a special segment talking about the plasma skip and how it works. But the gist of it is that every 20 steps, there's a very small chance for the dust clouds to spawn. Where is and this? you can manip um, where it spawns in order to block trainer's vision. And that lets you skip a decent chunk of the grunts that are within Chargestone Cave. So it just speeds up the section significantly. Um, and Skoa's run was the first record run to take advantage of it. Um, and mine now tied with his is, uh, I believe, the second. There are a couple runs on there. I know Cram, I believe, all did a plasma skip in his um, 311 run. Where's the, where's the timestamp for that, TTS? Um, let me find it for you. The plasma skip is... Just so I can... About, about 141-ish. should be the uh should be the plasma skip stuff so um so yeah as i said every 20 steps there's a small chance for a cloud to spawn and you can manip that cloud to spawn in front of a grunt's vision which lets you skip them and it saves like over a minute minute and a half ish i think i wasn't there during the whole uh timing and routing of plasma skip so i don't remember all of the uh the ups and downs that were um done in terms of timing but um, it's objectively it's faster. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's significant. Um, and so um, even though that Skoa did do the plasma skip in his run, um, the reason why I'm saying that there's a lot of time to save in on plasma skip is kind of twofold. One, because uh, at the very end of the cave, um, Skoa got an encounter, unfortunately. Because your repels are so tight going through Chargestone Cave that basically any extra steps between leaving Driftvale and getting to the end of the cave can uh, make leaving really, really sketchy because the, the two max repels alone are not enough to get through the cave. Usually you end up having like two or three tiles that you kind of just have to full yellow at the very end, which is definitely very sketchy and definitely very nerve wracking on pace, especially if you um, cook any of the movement <laughs> ahead of time on accident. Um, but, um, so the reason that I ended up saving a bunch of time was, as I said, because I didn't get an encounter like Skoa did, but also, um, I elected to do a lot of my plasma skip movement on the bike because plasma skip was so new. Um, there wasn't a real need to try to push any of the, uh, difficulty of it to be any harder than it needs to be. So Skoa, when he did, um, his run, he did a majority of it um, just running around just to make sure that uh, he doesn't do any extra steps or turn frames where he doesn't expect to. Um, but I do a solid like 80% of my movement on the bike, if not more. Um, and that helps me save a ton of time because the bike just moves so much faster in Gen 5 than running. Like it's it's Gen 3 mock bike ludicrous with speed. So. Um, you just end up saving a ton of time if you are willing to bike it all like I did. Um, so that was what really kind of brought me back because I was like a minute behind after Clay, as I said, and uh, all of a sudden I was 30 seconds behind, which I kind of had the like notion in the back of my mind that I could record, but my best possible time was also a 9:51, and when the record is a 9:54, you know you're kind of <laughs> you're kind of sweating a little bit, uh, trying to think about what you can do in order to um, squeeze out as much time save as you can. Um, so I believe uh, near the end, I started getting really um, crafty with spinners. Um, there was one notorious setup in Victory Road in particular. Um, that is really tricky because you have to do uh you have to run on one specific tile and one tile only and it's the one tile before you go into the spinner's vision and because the spinner can hear you um if you run that tile into his vision he immediately turns to you and battles you so 
you have to be, you know, really clean in order to uh, not get seen by him while also doing the the run manip to get him to look away, which is very um, sketch. I think in my record run, I think I actually bonked the boulders below uh, him after my run tile, which I don't know if that makes it safe anymore if you do that, but it was... Uh, something that uh, made me sweat a little bit, but I at least, you know, got rewarded for being a little riskier with my um, spinner passes, especially after trying to get all that time back after Skyli started bleeding again um, up towards the E4. Um, so I really only came back because of those Skywa and uh, end splits where, uh, as I mentioned, those were all the reasons that got me a little bit faster than, well, a little bit faster than score on those splits. Every other split, I was pretty much just bleeding time against him because he's a really good runner and his his pace was absolutely insane, um, except for that carry cost of death. So, I definitely think that this record can get pushed down more. I definitely think 308 is on the table if someone is willing to put in the time and effort. Um, I stopped at tied record because I thought it was honestly really funny to tie the record. <laughs> So um, I figured I would leave it there. Uh, Skoa hates me for it because he wishes I beat him so that he'd have an excuse to come back and run black, black <laughs> one. But, but because we're tied, there's technically not a reason for him to come back. So I, uh, I kind of win <laughs> uh, in this situation. But um, yeah, it just takes someone to come by and willing to put in a little bit more effort to get in that 308. Because I definitely think it's possible with the right amount of luck. It's just... A couple fights in black white one are notoriously uh obnoxious to finish and this category can get pretty uh grindy sometimes with uh how certain fights can go like the the bird fight can really screw you over if you get poisoned lenora can be really trolly if you just miss takedown since <laughs> with the x speed strats that i do now i have an 85 percent and a 14 and 16 range to to worry about so i definitely lost a lot of runs there um doing the Plasma skip on the bike is pretty tricky because that opens up uh, a lot more chance of error. I definitely lost quite a few good runs to uh, execution mistakes while doing plasma skip that uh, that should have recorded. And I think we're on better paces than this one even. But you know, you take what you can get when you get records. So. Mm -hmm. I actually forgot the Skoa died to Caracosta. His run must have like actually been insane in their game. <laughs> like yeah. insane, yeah. insane. No, yeah, I was like. 30 seconds behind a Lenora, and my Lenora is, like, not that bad. There's just so much that um, can factor into the early game. Another thing, too, is um, my little pup was a second ball, so that cost me, like, 12 seconds off rip. <laughs> mm, I Whereas I think Skoa got a, a YOLO ball, first ball, and it all worked out. So that, you know, that sets you back right away quite a bit, so. Yeah, uh, I mean, it does seem like a lot of the optimizations and like i guess risky took at the end of the game like really did add up to you know just tie the record um mm -hmm. so yeah i think you're not uh not upset about making those decisions um no i definitely am happy with how i handle the late game it just sucks when you look back at it and see like gets us use toxic you know that was a turn lost or protect you know <laughs> It's like mm -hmm. any any small nitpick i can look at this run because when you go down to the milliseconds i'm like point three slower uh seconds than skoa which you know <laughs> kind of stings a little because it's like oh, i was right there and any like micro mistake that happened in the run like um uh like i got i picked up a steel gem from a dust cloud in charge stone cave um there were a couple of you know minor menuing errors that could have <laughs> could have been yeah, the difference like, you know could have been anything yeah. Right, or, you know, first ball, a little pop, that, that would have been <laughs> the difference right there on its own, you know, so just a lot of different things that you try not to beat yourself up about, even though you are happy to say that you tied records. So. Yeah, and I don't think you mentioned it, but, like, one of the things that you did have over Skoa is um, the, the season change. Like, you had a seed that changed seasons which from winter to spring, which is, like, five seconds faster, just from oh. that movement section. Yep, you're right. So that is a new, that is another newer minor optimization um, that I believe it was Dexy who kind of cooked that all out. 
So the idea is, is because we primarily run in winter because Twist Mountain needs to be winter in order for it to be really quick. Otherwise, it's uh, a really tedious maze with a lot of trainers. I think that you have to go through. It's basically you have to play in winter. Um, so every runner has a little pup in winter. But the thing is, is that after Twist Mountain, there's not actually a real need to have winter, and it's actually slower to have winter because. Uh, Route 8, which is just past um, Assyria City, is all a winter wonderland. And because it's like a marshy area in every other season, um, in winter it actually freezes over and turns into a huge like slide puzzle. So if you I did have... not know about this. Yeah, so if you have the seasons change after Twist Mountain um, to spring, then what happens then is that Route 8 becomes a little bit faster because you don't have to do the slide puzzle. But the downside is that you have to use an extra max repel. Um, you get that. You get the seasons change cutscene, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's cool. Um, it's still like a net positive. Of, uh, yeah, it's a net positive seconds. of like five seconds, which. I mean, imagine that severely limits your. Uh, I imagine that severely limits the seeds you can do, though, right? Uh, yeah, because yeah, you have to look at like, like very late, like the thirtieth of April. Or something like that at like yeah the 20 so the hour. whole reason too that this is more possible than it ever was was actually because of plasma skip because plasma skip happens about 20 minutes before you clear twist mountain um 20 25 25 ish minutes i think it is actually so if you find like a plasma skip time that is in like after like 11 like i think binds like 11 35 p.m um, what will happen then is that you'll get the season cutscene change. Um, mine is usually as I'm leaving Bryson's gym, but you can also get it later if you need, like, um, when you leave, um, when you leave Nimbasa towards the Desert Resort, um, or maybe going into Dragon Spiral Tower also changes it. There's a couple different places. Basically, anytime you reload the overworld, um, there's a chance for a season change to happen if, like, the, the date rolls over and the seasons do happen to change mid, mid uh, session. But um, the best one to do it is Bryson's Gym, just because it gives you more leeway to have it happen before Route 8. Because after you beat, or after you clear Twist Mountain, you have to do all of Bryson's Gym. Then you have to go all the way up Dragon Spiral Tower, and then you have to go all the way down the Relic Castle, down on uh, Route 4 south of Mombasa. So. You have quite a decent window to try to get the uh, seasons to change before um, Route 8. Uh, but you have to get that overworld reload to happen, as I said. And that doesn't really happen after Relic Castle unless you intentionally do it. And at that point, you're just going to lose more time running in and out of like a center or a random house to do it. That's really cool. All right. Um... Well, I guess we probably should wrap it up with this topic. Is there anything else you want to say? Like, anything at all? Um, I am ready to grind Black White 1 if someone beats my time, but I'm also ready to enjoy a Gen 5 hiatus at the same time, so there's no rush to beat my <laughs> Black White 1 record. Uh, but overall, yeah, um... I'm pretty happy with the stuff that I did in Black White 1 and how things played out, so... Yeah, I think, right, where you, like, the, the the tie is just really funny. Like, it's just the perfect. Right, it's just so like, funny, because it was coming right down to the wire, too. Yeah. As soon as I beat Getsus, I'm just looking over at my live split, and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> and as soon as I hit time, I'm like, okay, I got to stop recording and, like, frame count this, because I don't know if this is actual record or not, because I think my, I was really sloppy with my, like, end split or whatever. So I was like, okay, I don't actually know if I tied. And it would have been absolutely soul-crushing to be a second slower. And if it was a second faster, it would have been like, well, I guess I did it. <laughs> it's just, uh, the, the funniest outcome was the tie, and I'm, I'm all right with that. I just wished SRC would, because uh, they got that little history now where you could see all the history progression of the records. If they would, <laughs> if they would mention the tie on there, that'd be, <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> It'd boost my ego a little bit. Um... I guess we can move on to what you did after Black and White 1, which is uh, some challenge mode in White 2. Um, currently, your PB is a 314.13, which happened yesterday, which is good enough for third place. Um, 
Did you want to talk about a little bit about the run? Or yeah. Highlighted clay. Um, perfect. So, Sorry, this yeah, is I'd... this is also cropped really badly because of Twitch. So, <laughs> of my apologies. It's, it's no worries. So, um, yeah, challenge mode. Uh, that is it's all either. Challenge mode right after finishing black white one. I kind of started sneaking it in before um, getting the black white run record actually, just because. Um, I tried to sneak in a GDQ submission for challenge mode, which ended up working, because I'm really happy. So I did one run of challenge mode to, for my GDQ submission, and then uh, went back to get the black one record. So now I'm now I'm on challenge mode, because I wanted to get a good time in challenge mode to ground, to kind of round out everything with, uh, the, like, j just get all three Gen 5 main boards, um, you know, at a, at a state where I'm happy with them, so I can kind of put Gen 5 down as a whole, and focus elsewhere but um, so with challenge mode um, this is definitely the most my sanity has been tested so far <laughs> when <laughs> running um, a Pokemon category just because of the brutality of so many different um, sections and fights in it because there's so many fights that can go really really well and save you a buttload of time but there's also a lot of fights where the expected or the worst possible outcome just cost you so much time that it makes it really demoralizing to want to come back or um, you just have like a really rough streak so uh, this PB of mine which yeah was a, it was a day or two ago I can't remember exactly they all blend together once they're in the past but um, this was the first run in a hot minute where I was on okayish pace and got past Elisa because um, the problem with challenge mode and it's Anyone who's finished a run of challenge mode uh, will instantly tell you that, without a doubt, the worst fight is Elisa. So the problem in challenge mode with Elisa is that um, she leads an Amolga with Aerial Ace, which without an X defend just completely destroys you. Um, you basically are praying that you never get crit by Aerial Ace in order to survive the fight, while also praying that you do not get static against the Amolga because Amolga has a 30% chance to activate its ability static, which paralyzes you, and you have to get rid of it immediately because um, there's just no point trying to hit through it. Uh, and it makes you slower than um, the next Pokemon that comes out, which is always Joltik, because Joltik has Energy Ball, and Energy Ball does a more than half. So if you're slower than Joltik and you're not set up to handle it properly, you are just absolutely screwed. Like, there's just no real good way to recover from that you have to take a death which gets rid of your x defend and then you have to uh try to set up around the fact that joltik's on the field you kind of hope that it volt switches out into flappy and you just set up on flappy and pray for no confuse ray at the same time but it's just it's just a terrible fight if you get that static and i've been on a really bad streak of getting the static uh, as you kill a Mulligo that basically just ruins your pace and <laughs> the run in general like it's just it's so bad. Tucker can attest to how bad Molga is. You you hold the record in challenge mode right now, in fact. Yeah, absolutely. It's just a really excruciatingly painful fight. Um, yeah. It just it's just kind of like throwing stuff at the wall and hoping that it sticks when right. you're playing challenge mode. Right. So uh, look out for that on the GDQ stage come <laughs> come July. Uh, <laughs> assuming the challenge one incentive gets met. But um, yeah, so this is the first run in a hot minute where I had actually gotten past Elisa, which was really satisfying to finally get past her and like see the rest of the game. But it's never really over after Elisa because you still have all of the clay split. The clay split is just like four really bad fights smudged together in a really terrible, <laughs> terrible uh, short amount of time. And um, the last run that I had, they got past Elisa, which did get the, sta the static, but I was just barely able to recover on a okayish pace, so it wasn't worth resetting yet. But uh, that run died to Clay because Clay is the next really bad fight because um, you have to set up against an Onyx that has that can just click bulldoze, and if it clicks bulldoze, you just have a really another bad time because you have to swap and back in to get your uh, speed back because you don't have a guard spec to deal with the speed drops and onyx fortunately never really likes to use bulldoze 
Uh, it prefers to use Rock Slide instead because of the flinch chance, I assume. Uh, Gen 5 AI is weird and never understood well, but um, it also can sometimes just click Explosion, and depending on where you are in your setup, Explosion is just really bad because you either need to be plus two and get a nine and 16 range or plus three to guarantee the Sand Slash that comes out next because it also has Bulldoze and if you don't get past um, Sand Slash, you're basically screwed. Yeah, the, the thing about Onyx's Bulldoze AI is like it, it it can pick it until it picks Rock Polish and it's like more likely to pick Rock Polish, I think, because like, you know, once it's faster, it has no, yeah. uh, it has no incentive to, like to pick Bulldoze, right. which lowers speed. More... It has more of an incentive to go for the flinch move than it does for the speed drop because it's already faster. Oh, it's, it's it's way more to do with like speed drop move, never pick it faster, kind of claws. Right. Yeah, but um, which which it does mean like on turn one or like on, on the first few turns, like it's more likely to pick bulldoze. Right um, until you get rock polish. Right into that. Yeah, yeah, basically. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's also a few other difficult fights like Marlin and Marshall, which are also problems in any percent, but like I'd say are worse in challenge mode. Um just like yeah want to basically, how, how those went for you. Right. Basically in challenge mode, with the exception of Roxy and Drayden, basically like every landmark fight, which is like gym leaders E4 or champion, all just get significantly worse. Whereas every like other like standard trainer fight gets significantly better. With one exception of Rude. Rude is still worse in challenge mode just because of a couple different things, but um, yeah. So I, I managed to get past Elisa and Clay okay. I did get Bulldoze um, to start from Onyx, but after I swapped back uh, out and in again, I did not get it again. So that was uh, beneficial for me so I could finally set up Home Claws to take care of the Sand Slash, no problem. Uh, from there, um, Things were pretty okay. Uh, I got a really good um, Draven split. I got the good Undel Arrival fight where um, you don't have Hughes on Pheasant to pick Taunt turn one, which lets you use Home Claws to get to plus two, which uh, lets you guarantee the Samurai instead of having to deal with um, kind of balancing the risk of dying to an Aqua Jet because use Samurai's Aqua Jet does can't well it can do just over half of your HP so you kind of have to really weigh your chances with the HP that you're at and a lot of the times you're just going to have to heal um, which eats up a lot of time if you have to heal repeatedly to in order to set up to a point where you can tank an Aqua Jet as you take it out with um, an Earthquake after you rock slide it but yeah that's um, one of the absolutely garbage fights and and uh Challenge mode. I actually didn't get the good fight, but I got like a good enough roll from Aqua Jet, mm -hmm. so that I like barely lived. It's usually how that version of the fight goes. Yeah, right. if you lose that fight, then I mean, if you die in that fight, then it's like pretty much wraps. Yeah, yeah there's not really a good way to recover that fight because he was pretty much always going to pick Aqua Jet for its priority. So it just makes the fight really bad. But fortunately, I got the good fight, so I actually golded um, Drayden in this run, which was really clean. Uh, my Marlin fight was um, clean overall. Um, if I recall right, I did have to take a death on um, Jellicent because I got scald from Caracosta. But it wasn't a big deal in the world because it gave me an excuse to sack it up. Because usually... Um, since Marlin in challenge mode leads Waylord, if Waylord picks Raindance turn one, uh, what happens is um, when he sends out Mantine third, you have one turn left of rain before it uh, fizzles out. So what you can do is you can sack the dove to kind of stall out that last rain turn because Mantine has swift swim and if it's faster than you, it's game over. Uh, so being able to sack the dove there is really useful because you need to kill off the dove at some point anyway. That you don't have to do it later in a double where it's going to be a lot slower because you're just ready to go but you have to wait for um both your put up inside to die off so that uh x girl gets all the exp because watching those two get exp is really slow in gen 5 contrast to how snappy everything else is in gen 5 when it comes to fights but 
Um, so I was able to sack foot up there. So I didn't really lose a ton of time because of that. Um, but the real issue was that in my PB from uh, a couple days ago, I got two phenomenon. One pretty much right after um, talking to Chorus by Tracheon, right before I was going to do a uh, trainer skip. And um, I got one in Giant Chasm on the way to the first like grunt talk. So those combined ate up about 30 seconds of time in my run, which is very devastating in white too. You basically are always hoping that you never get a uh, phenomenon to occur. And if you do, you really hope that it's an item if it's like a cave spot. Cause you're more likely to get owned by cave spots, I think, than anything else. So you just always hope that if you do, it's an item. But um, each like phenomenon that you hit costs like what, 12, 15 seconds or so? Am I thinking that right, Tucker? I think it's about that much. Yeah, yeah, 15. So when those happen, you're always just devastated because it always eats up a pretty decent chunk of your uh, pace, especially in a run like challenge mode where you're already like <laughs> clawing at any possible time save that you can get from having a better than average fight. Um, so that was really a hit to morality because um, I think after the first one, when I finished Frigate 2, I was um, tied with both my PB and you, or my old PB. So I basically have two runs that have the exact same time to Frigate 2 with wildly different <laughs> uh, outcomes to get there. But um, unfortunately after that, because that second cloud, it kind of ruined my chances of getting close to record. And you just have a way more insane end game than I could yeah, you, of. You don't, you don't really want to be tied with me entering Frigate 2 because there's not much time save left on no. my on my run. Yeah. No, because the only just, bad thing that like, happened... Yeah. The only bad thing was happened is that you got burned by Chantal's Papadrigas, right? Um like literally everything else went well. You got like the perfect martial fight, you got the you got the high dragon range on Iris. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Like Um my, my Caitlyn wasn't good, I guess, where I got hypnosis. But yeah, the Chantal oh, and Caitlyn yeah. were not great, but the rest was insane. Right, so it's just really hard to compete with an end game like that. So I think I went from tied you to like 52 behind by the time I finished Iris, and that's with one flinch on Marshall. I got the coffer range. I got a hypnosis miss on Caitlyn. Um, I didn't get the range the first time on High Dragon, but I got the second one while she healed, and I went for a flinch on uh, hacks for the memes and didn't get it and died because I was at pretty low HP already going into Iris. I was expecting to have to max survive on High Dragon, but I got Focus Blast Miss, which was uh, kind of clutch. Yeah. Um, yeah, that sounds correct. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you're pretty much, like, going for record at this point. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't think you'd stop until you get it. No, I'm not expecting I, to hold it. <laughs> I got I got two months to you know to yeah. kill until my hopefully challenge mode run at GDQ anyway. So I That's have plenty, plenty of time, time to grind this category out. Although it is starting to get nice weather out, which is going to really destroy my um, availability to do runs as much. But I'm still hoping to close this out. It's basically just get runs past Clay and hope for the best, which is easier said than done. You'll you'll know that better than anyone else. So. I hope that swings you in your favor soon. Yeah, we'll see. Hopefully not too soon, though, because I don't know what I'm going to fill my time with between <laughs> getting record and GQ <laughs> if I get it, like, tomorrow. Yeah, I so, mean... You did say you wanted, like, take a break from Gen 5, at least, for a bit. Yeah, maybe. I will be dabbling into some Gen 4 once I have kind of tied a pretty knot on challenge mode, so whenever that happens yeah cool um and i think your situation for jdq right now is like if the incentive is not met which is like i'd say it's like it's going to happen because it's a pokemon run at jdq um like you will be doing any percent unless that incentive is met then you'll be doing, doing challenger mode right so i don't know all the details yet but it is going to start out as a white to any percent run and then there will be some kind of incentive that opens up for uh challenge mode to be unlocked in which case i would run challenge mode instead 
And since I'm currently running challenge mode, I would really like to uh, have the challenge mode in front of unlock so that I don't have to dust off normal mode. I'll, I'll have my notes ready just in case, but uh, I'm going to go in with the mentality that um, the generous people around the world will help donate to reach the uh, the challenge mode incentive and raise money for a good cause. So I also think challenge mode is just the more interesting run. And I, yeah. I've gotten to show off uh, any percent, even with the new like grotto route changes and everything um, pretty recently. Um, I showed it off for a GDQ hot fix um, not too long ago and I got like a 311 in it, which was actually really cracked for oh, wow. a marathon run. So I'm really happy with that showcase of any percent. So I don't think I need to show it off like again. Uh, at least not anytime soon, because I've done it a lot in a lot of other um, marathons. I've showed off White 2 for ESA last uh, summer, for example, and PSRM and a couple other places here and there. I've done White 2 any percent. So I'm looking forward to doing challenge mode just because that's more interesting to me right now. And I think it's a more um, interesting and fun run to um, get invested in as a viewer, even just because of how many fights that can go really well or really bad, especially if you know the real ins and outs of Pokemon. So. Yeah, I mean, you've yeah, been... I think I agree. Yeah, you've done, like, so many marathon runs at this point that, like, you know, I think you're pretty prepared for basically anything. Uh, I think you do a great job at GDQ. Yeah, I'm I agree. looking forward to it. I, I think I got a pretty good uh, couch secured for it. Um, I know of some people who are going to make some really nice donation prizes to help incentivize people to donate to uh, unlock challenge mode. Um, I've gotten a lot of support from uh, various different corners of PSR, you know, wishing me the best uh, as soon as they saw the games listing that I got in. So really looking forward to uh, putting on a good show for everyone. And I hope everyone who's going to attend there absolutely stacks that back couch. Now that the back couch is back at GDQ, you know, <laughs> I want to see that thing absolutely jam packed with, I'll be uh, there. with runners. You will be there. I'm excited mm -hmm. to see everyone too. It's been a while since I've gotten to see anyone, so. Yeah, wait. I'm, I'm looking, we're all kind of looking forward to GDQ at this point. We've just been pattering about it for That's months now. That's all we've been talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everyone's itching to get back together and have some fun and play games again, just like we did with the last one, so. Yeah. Um, it's always a Only a matter of time. Right around the corner. You know, 65 days, I think, is something like that. Oh, you got the countdown. Right? Nice. Yeah, something <laughs> like that. I Yeah, I'm in the official like GDQ Discord for like just everyone, and there's like a countdown that they have in there, and I keep seeing it lit up with someone looking at the time, and it's like 60-some days, and that doesn't feel like a lot of time when you think about it as 60 days. Like, it's coming up really quick. I, I always see people joke about, oh, oh it's next month, you know, because it starts at the end of June. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess maybe we can move on unless there's anything else you want to talk about. Um, no, I think I've collaborated enough about how interesting Gen 5 is. No, it was great. Yeah, it's thanks great. so much. It's, 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 it's nice to have someone on who like can talk a lot about, you know, a specific thing, like like a specialist, if you will. You're a specialist. <laughs> yeah, yeah you've kinda, kind of become the Gen Five guy. Like, yeah, just... I kind of have because I've been deep in the weeds with a lot of the RNG stuff and coming up with tools and stuff to try to help make the minute finding process easier. Just because with Gen Five, you know, every minute is uh, personalized. Not every cartridge is minute uh, <laughs> is personalized, but uh, every every DS I'll say is personalized because that MAC address is in the RNG. So. It makes it kind of challenging to for new people to come in the Gen 5, including myself when I started like a year and a half ago. And there's been a lot of strides to make things better, um, especially with the tools that we have for searching, which has allowed us to do more things like um, plasma skip and um, better, more optimized drill proceeds, uh, among other things. Uh, it's just a really awkward state right now because there's a lot of um, people who want to come together and help create uh, Minip guides for people to start Gen 5 because Gen 5 is honestly a really fun um, and good beginner game to play and just a really fun categories but it's after you kind of get over the hump of finding all your own Minips that it gets to be um, really fun and satisfying to play 
Um, and unfortunately, the tools that we have right now are not quite in a good state where making a guide for all this stuff is worth the time and effort because once the last um, few updates that we're hoping come sooner rather than later on uh, PokeFinder, which is kind of like the new hot RNG tool that everyone uses to kind of replace RNG Reporter. You know, once that finally gets the last couple updates it needs for um, full Gen 5 support, uh, there'll be some good strides from the community to make some good guides for people to get into Gen 5 so that the um, stigmatism about you know how difficult it is to get into Gen 5 or Gen 5 running kind of goes away a little bit, but it's uh, you know it's so close but so far away. So uh, you know in that intermediate area, I invested a lot of time uh, with people who are interested in doing the minips, trying to make it as simple as possible without you know making it seem more difficult than it is, just because. You know, like the tools that we use currently are all in Japanese and uh, things are kind of scatterbrained about and, in, you know, random Python scripts. So being able to consolidate all that in the near future is something that I definitely plan to strive for, especially if I'm going to stop running Gen 5 in the near future so I don't <laughs> forget everything that I've learned in the time that I've run. So. All right. Well, I guess we can I guess we can move on to our to our Yoda runs. Thank you, TTS, for, for your time, of course. Um, yeah, no problem. Um, so I guess we'll start with uh, Randall's uh, Let's Go Eevee AOP world record. I don't know if you know anything about that iron, but... Uh, not too much. I know Randall's been um, been really working the AOP and Diploma, and even the, the any percent NMS side as well. Uh, on Let's Go, in addition to being second in the Fire Leaf Green tournaments, this this man's doing it all. Um, so he Randall got he now has three sub fives in Let's Go AOP. Nobody else has a sub five. He's the only one who's done it. Um, this is the first one for Eevee. He has a couple of them in in, in Pikachu. The Pikachu time is significantly better than the Eevee time. I'm, I'd have to ask him whether. Uh, the Pikachu time is much significantly luckier. I assume it would be because they are pretty comparable. Um, but yeah, Randall's just disparity. It, it, there really isn't. I don't think. Um, some people may argue that Eevee is faster, like at any percent, but it's really hard to say for AOP. There's just so much. <laughs> There's so much RNG and and luck yeah. that goes into this. So um, yeah, he's just really mastered a lot of how the the catching works and knowing sort of uh, how to sort of tread that fine line between waiting for a long time versus like maybe moving on sort of thing in terms of waiting for spawns so in addition to getting very lucky on the rare spawns as well um let's see how his uh, actually he doesn't have splits so i have to remember where the power plant is but yeah aop is just kind of just get it like you just hope that you get like a mediocre <laughs> waiting time for like each thing because like oh, yeah, there's, there's the so many rare okay. spawns you have to get it's like round two on steroids exactly yeah. exactly what it is yeah so this is like the first sort of major reset point in the run is when you're going for dratini which is a four percent spawn in the water um and after that you have to do power plant which has zapdos which is a very difficult catch um and there's not much space for it to spawn either. Yeah, you you really can only get like four spawns, and then you have to like repel and lure again. It's it's quite brutal. A tentacruel is not something you want to see because <laughs> it aggro's. It I will not leave close. you alone. <laughs> so you just repel that off right away. But yeah, there it is. Okay. It's like almost it's it's that almost instant. <laughs> I love his reaction too. Yeah, <laughs> Um, yeah, so, like, I actually got a, f I actually got a 4, no, 517 in AOP a few weeks ago, and my Dratini was, like, a minute in. It was super fast. That's usually what happens once these times get good, is you're just getting everything instantly, and everything just lines up for you. <laughs> so. Yeah. But, yeah, they're like, it's just, like, if any of the rare spawns take more than, like, 5-10 minutes, you're really, like kind of looking at a, a reset at this kind of level yeah that's two and a half hours into the run too yeah. so you're you're <laughs> playing a decent amount of the run before you get to this point although a lot of runners 
some runners they actually go for Kangaskhan and Rock Tunnel, and you have to pass through Rock Tunnel on your way to Celadon. And you would some runners just reset if they don't see Kangaskhan on that path, that first pass. Um, oh my god! But you can opt to go back to Rock Tunnel because you're coming back for Jatini anyway. But it's obviously faster to get it earlier. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's that's Randall's AOP run, and then pretty much kind of piggybacking off of that, we have. Randall doing a diploma run with you. Yeah, so... The world record, right? Yeah, it is. This is... I don't know how we did it. It was... Everything just went really well for both of us. I wouldn't consider myself, like, an extremely good runner of this game, but being paired up with Randall, it's... Uh, if things go, if things, if things go well, then things go well. Like I had, I, there were there are certain situations where I'm like, Randall, do I evolve this? He's like, No, no, you have to trade this to me. Don't. Um, so if I had tra if I had evolved it, it would have been awful. Um, but yeah, this run was this run was good. I think. So for the Pikachu side, which we're seeing Eevee right now, Randall actually prefers Pika. Um, he had to run Eevee because I don't have Pika, and everything just went really really well in terms of like our spawns um the i had to catch two of the legendary birds and they were both pretty quick like two balls for articuno and five for zapdos i think which is pretty fast um the rare spawns so scyther dratini and kangaskhan were all pretty good um yeah everything just went really well even though i don't think i played particularly great um we just got pretty good rng on both sides at the end we had to kind of wait around and hunt for Ditto and Chansey, of all things. You'd think you'd see a Chansey <laughs> many, many times earlier in the run, but it decided not to show up. I think I did see one very, very early, but you typically want to get your Chansey when you have Dratini in your party, so it picks up a ton of experience off of that. So, oh, and yeah. Cerulean Cave, yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, so we were both we were both like hunting in Cerulean Cave and Pokemon Mansion at the end for the, the, the Ditto and the Chansey. It was pretty brutal, but uh, we ended up just getting the doing the trades really quick. Everything was really organized. Um, and we worked really well. And usually what happens is if you don't... A lot of the time what happens is at the end of the run where you're doing the trades, sometimes like the Pika... Usually the Pika runner needs more things than the Eevee runner. So the Pika runner is just trading like a dummy Pokemon back to the Eevee just to complete the... Because you have to get the decks, to complete the decks on both sides. And this run, I think we only had two extra trades to do. Um, we were only off by two, wow. so which is which is really good. Uh, ideally, you want to be. Ideally, you want that to be zero. Um, I've had runs where it's been like five or six Pokemon, and it's been pretty bad. So, it's good. Really, just good communication is is key to kind of making sure where we get as even even the catch evenly catch on the catches as possible, and and uh, making sure that we're actually doing all the trades and trading the right things um, to each other at the right times is is really important. So it's a super fun run. The only thing I don't like about it is the very end of the run, the last 30 minutes is just trades, and it's mm -hmm. pretty anticlimactic, but... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely recommend this run if, if anyone's interested, let's go. I know the tournament is the any percent category, but the the catch the catch and mole style categories, AOP and Diploma, are all both really, really fun. Uh, so I definitely recommend those. It's very much a different experience. Like you definitely yeah. don't like you can definitely run any percent of Let's Go without like knowing many of the mechanics of the game. But for this, you really have to just like have a ton of knowledge about a lot of things. Yeah, there's so many more like uh, attack patterns that the Pokemon have when you're trying to catch them that you have to know, and it's yeah, and it, it's it's I just find it so much more fun. <laughs> it's it's much less of a grind than any percent, but. Mm -hmm. Well, congrats again on that. That's that's really yeah. That's thanks. Really impressive. Yeah, then thanks, Randall, again for uh, for doing that. That was uh, definitely a lot of fun, right? He's we've done a lot of diplomas together, so I think we got a good we got a good system going. Well, I guess another funny another funny tidbit about this run I, before we move on is every single diploma I've done with Randall myself on the Pika side catches Pikachu for Randall because I can't trade my starter. I he he ideally catches a Pikachu and then trades the Raichu to me, he evolves the Pikachu. But what I had to do was catch the Pikachu for him because he didn't see one in the Viridian Forest, and then, I, and then I traded it to him, and then he traded back the Raichu. So it's, it's quite funny how that happens very, very frequently for our runs. So, <laughs> Yeah. All right. uh, we'll next up, yeah, we'll move on to... This is, uh, this is another run by one of our hosts. This is 
your run head bob uh isle of armor um get urshifu record 12006 yeah or 05 actually <laughs> um yeah so this is uh yeah shield get urshifu and this was like i have been doing this for a while i don't know if i actually was trying to get record get urshifu is like a very strange case because it's hard to really like go for world record without like explicitly resetting for the XL candy because that's basically the, the the whole thing of this run is whether you get yeah. the XL candy from this mayor candy spot or not and obviously I do um this was the first time that I got it it's a 5% count, uh, chance to happen each run so if you're resetting for it then it's you know 35 minutes in um it saves a ridiculous amount of time at least 2 minutes but could be you know 3 4 potentially um and it just like it's just so crazy how much time it saves. At, the, at this stage, even before um, I got this run, it was already like kind of getting tough to, to record without getting the XL candy. Um, and I, I think I think the previous record before this was like two minutes slower, and that was uh, that was T Pat um, on one of his first runs getting the XL candy. Uh, yeah, it's just it's just like crazy how much the time the XL saves. Like you get better ranges yeah. in the Tower of Two Fists when you use Cub Fu. You don't have to do one of the uh, the Vistas, I guess, for friendship. Yep. Um, which saves like a lot of walking or whatever. And along with that, you don't have to get the TR for reversal and the Rocky Helmet, which is another, you know, at least thirty seconds, probably more like forty five second detour. Um. And so all of that combined, plus, yeah, it, it just saves, like, an insane amount of time. So this was the first run that I I did with the XL Candy. Um, and it pretty much just went according to plan. I don't think I missed any Muddy Waters. The one funny thing about this run is you might see on the bottom there, I have minus special attack on my Sobble. But the IV was good, so I decided to continue. Oh, and okay, I got the, yeah. Uh, I got the Serious Mint to, to make up for it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, That's kind of funny. And so, yeah, I just... Yeah, I just basically just had a standard run with the XL candy, and it was, and it was this. So that was that was it basically. One thing I noticed is after you got the XL candy, before you death warped to the Abomasnow, I saw you pick up another medium candy. That looked like something that I've never oh, yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something I like to do in in that grind because that's a guarantee the XP candy M. Oh, when there, um, oh okay. Yeah, so I just I just like that uh, that got me um level twenty five for for Drizzile, so I was able to get a lot faster fights. Oh, that's really um, good, yeah. Yeah, like it like it gives you better ranges for um what Kadabra is like a pretty bad range, I think, on, on Avery two. Yeah. Um Whirlipede. I mean they're they're all they're all like no matter what version you play, there's like bad ranges on that fight either way. So like yeah. in the, like in the end it doesn't like really matter which version you play. I, I, I just picked playing shield because um like you're pretty likely to have to heal off like poison on on clara three and so i just i just figured yeah yeah probably be better just play on shield um yeah i mean both both of the versions are pretty comparable yeah once you're beefing up your your sobble then you're pretty much yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i know before we were doing the blissey hunt it was it was like the avery two fight was particularly bad that cadabra was nasty so um yeah it was. I was so definitely not a fun. Game. Definitely not a fun run when, when I was doing it. Uh, so, yeah. but we move on for that now. So luckily, you got the Crown Tundra stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, it's super cool. Um, so I guess we'll move on now to uh, Apure Joe's run of the same category on the Isle of Armor, which is second place. Um, this go. happened actually not too long after my run. Um, and it was. I don't think he had been running the category for very long, and he uh he got the XL candy. Um, and so that was so that was his first run with the XL candy. Generally, you don't actually get that many runs like ever with the XL candy. Like you like if you're running this category, you'd be lucky to get like more than two runs with the XL candy. Yeah. Um, and so when you get it, you really have to take advantage of it. Um, and so this was this was his run per se. 
Um, yeah, I wonder if here he was he was picking. You saw him picking up a bunch of items that ended up being useless. I think he, maybe he was going for the Dynite Ore there. Maybe, uh, yeah, yeah. and then he decided, oh, I'm just going to go for the the uh, freezing tin candy and ends up getting it. So, yeah, yeah. It, like if you sometimes you can like opt to just like kind of flex going for because if you get the Dynite Ore, you can go into the uh, the max layer and trade it for an EXP Candy L. Which is a little bit slow because you have to like take a cutscene or whatever. Yeah. But uh, like if you're like if you're if you're like okay with you know getting a run that, um, like has the XP candy L, not necessarily the XP candy XL, then it's definitely a, a viable option for sure. Sure, both hit there is funny. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I think I, I was there for a little bit. I think um, his fights were like. Obviously, you saw like he didn't get the M there, so it was, he was a little bit lower level. But um, I think his fights weren't, you know, anything too bad. Um, I I I think I remember something happening with uh something something definitely happened that was like not good in the mid game. Might might have been something with like slow pokes or something. Um, so he was definitely like kind of close to my run. And then he lost pace somewhere. Um, yeah, I mean, I think overall the run was like fine. Obviously, he saved. He also saved like what forty five seconds on what the previous record was. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Oh wow, and it didn't even. Yeah, he managed to get away from it. Missed the slowpoke cycle though, but I guess it's better than an encounter. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. that's what it was. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So that that loses like close to ten seconds, I think. So he has to wait for yep. it to wrap around now. Yeah. So this yep. yeah this category yeah you pretty much need to get XL to get record even even I think even getting third place you need to get the XL candy at this point, um, or even fourth I think Spider also had in fourth has the XL so. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of kind of crowded at the top. You definitely you definitely if you want to go for record in this game it's definitely not a fun time. <laughs> but I mean it's like. I think fundamentally the the route is like more enjoyable. Like if you're not going, oh to yeah, than yeah. it was with the Blissies for sure. Yeah. Um, before you had to, there there was no EXP candies. You had to grind up your Cub Fu like ten levels or so with with Wild Blissies, which was not great because that's also like a rare spawn. You're depending on that. Um. But yeah. Since this has come about, it's been a lot more enjoyable experience i'd say yeah for sure all right well congrats again on that that was i guess this is not your run but we're i guess we're done talking <laughs> we're talking about isle of armor for now so uh congrats to you yeah. and at Piergeo on that what these runs thank you thank you um we'll move on to a couple runs by what watame i think is their way you pronounce their name both of them patch path of legends records um this i believe is the japanese uh record Oh wait, hold on. What do we have here? I can't remember. I mean, they've been doing a lot of like Starfall Street, but I don't remember if they actually ran on English when they ran that. They, they did, right? I think so. Um, well, this might yeah, be in English. Is, this is in English, yeah. Just English, all the splits, yeah. all the splits are in Japanese. So yeah. So this is the. So he got, they got record in both the English and the Japanese uh, side of things. Uh, this is a fifty-one fourteen. Uh, the Japanese obviously do things a bit differently. They do they actually start from uh, new game in terms of timing. So the runs are about fifty minutes longer or so. I don't know too much about this run, but uh, it's it doesn't, they don't have splits that I got to the end of at least for this uh, for the English side. So I feel like it's been a while since Path of Legends record has been taken. I feel like not many people have been like trying for it. Yeah, because if we go, where are you? Here we are. 
yeah, so, so Crisis five months ago, and then, uh, yeah, it's pretty crowded up at the top here. <laughs> five people with, uh, with 51s. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty tight. That's uh, even top ten is is pretty tight. So yeah, I, I remember this category was like very much popping, like at, like right as the game came out. Like this is definitely the one that people gravitated towards the most. I feel like. But I remember, like, yeah, I remember when that when when Sprigatito kind of became the main mon that we used. Pulse Pulse's twelfth, but it's now twelfth place time was the record. <laughs> so. Uh, it's improved quite a lot just through execution and minor optimizations. So, yeah, well, congrats to congrats to them. I, yeah, I also don't know much about the run, but uh, nice to see a, a record in this category after such a long time. Yep, yeah, and then Watame also got the record in the Japanese side. Um, this run should also use Miyascarada. Um but it's a little bit trickier because you're starting from the early game. You can't use a backup save, so you have to kind of stick with what you get. Um, there's probably a certain amount of stats that are runnable and some that aren't. So, uh, but then I think yeah. they would, depending on your stats, you would let me. You would probably level up a little bit more than the English side just to make sure make the ranges work. So, yeah, it's kind of a luxury the English run has. You can just like reset for a. A really, really cracked out Sprigatito, like before the run starts. But with the Japanese timing, you have to get a different yeah. Sprigatito every time. So it's definitely not as forgiving, I imagine. In terms of actually doing the run, I'm sure, I'm sure resetting for a Sprigatito beforehand for like a, you know, 1%, 2% stat threshold isn't, isn't all that fun either, but. Yeah. Once you get it, it seems good. But yeah, what Tommy's been really putting a lot of work in a lot of the categories. They definitely have Starfall English. I'm not sure if they have the Japanese as well, and I'm not sure if they've even done Victory Road. So <laughs> I don't think they've touched Victory Road yet, but I mean, yeah. I'm, sure, I'm yeah. sure that's coming up on the horizon. Yeah. You can't <laughs> yeah. imagine. <laughs> yeah, there's still quite a bit of activity. I think more on the Japanese side of things for Scarlet and Violet these days, not so much on the English side. It's kind of died down a little bit, but uh, it's good to see. Still lots of activity there. Um, yeah, so let's let's talk about... We got one more sort of noted run to talk about here, and this one's another Twitch one, so I apologize. Uh, I'm going to hide the... That. This is uh, this is a fan game speed run by Alimra. Um, Pokemon Infinite Fusion Classic Any% uh this is a time of one hour and forty seconds. So this this is probably one of the more popular fan games in the fan game oh my gosh, collection. What are you looking at <laughs> Yeah, this is a this is an interesting fight. I'll have to once at some point we'll have to get uh, one of these runners like Alimra on the podcast to talk about it because I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> but the, we've probably talked about it a bit before. A lot of the, the sprites are, are made by the community, so there's actually some really good artwork that's been done for some of these, so um, there's a built-in speed-up key in case you're wondering why everything's moving so fast. Um, but this is like probably one of the more popular fan game speedruns. That's right now. There's quite a few runners that are working on the various categories here, and Alimra is pushing for a sub one hour. So uh, we'll 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 have to get him on the podcast if he uh, if he achieves that. <laughs> that's I think that's what I'd like to do at least. So um, yeah, just a really uh, really good run that's uh, been had a lot of work put into it as well and i think he also got the beat gold which is sort of like the e4 round two equivalent uh, category oh there's a little bit, a bit of a mishap there <laughs> uh, he also got record in that category as well so uh he's been putting in quite a bit of work this game seems very interesting i've always like i've always seen uh mashed up sprites from this game and i oh, like i always thought they were like very well made that one was just on screen that was puzzling. I couldn't figure it out oh. before it flashed off screen. That is, <laughs> that is one crazy. heck of, oh my. Every time you look at one, you, you think you've seen the craziest one and then another one just pops up. Like what in the world? There's there's on? some there's some pretty cursed ones. There's a good website you can actually like check out what all the different mashups look like if you if you're if you're curious. Uh, there's some really well, weird ones. Are, they all are very intricate seeming, I feel like, even if they don't like, you know. 
even even if some of them are like kind of cursed, like you definitely can like see the intricacies and. Yeah, yeah. people actually like created these and, and drew them themselves. So. That's awesome. It's just the initial shock value of trying to figure out what you're looking at. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if anyone's wondering, this is a, a Swampert Gyarados mashup that's being used here. Um, what's been really cool, I've been sort of tangentially following the routing of this, and, and they've looked at tons of different mains um, and trying lots Whoa. of different stuff. So, What just happened there? I think that was the debug tool, so you can actually, like, it's kind of like an infinite escape rope. You can actually get out of um, dungeons and, and gyms and stuff. Oh, it, cool. The tool, I think, was intentionally initially designed to sort of, if you get stuck and soft locked, you can just kind of get away using that. And, the, and, the, and they just use it in the speed run <laughs> to go faster, so. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, that's a very weird looking <laughs> mech ooh, ooh. Well, that's not the good. Like second, like, Rhyhorn fusion that we've seen, and they don't get any less cursed every time they <laughs> them. It's still 4x weak to water. Yeah, so what, well, the, way, the way the mashups work is, like, it's the head and the of one mana and the body of another. You can actually s get a, an item that switches the two. So, and, each, and depending on the combination, it, it has a different ability and different, I think, different level up move set or something. It's 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 Watch really it wild. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the difference then? Like, what is the difference between like what the head does and what the uh, the rest of the body does? I'm not sure if it's different IVs that are changed or yeah, I I, I couldn't say. Um, okay, okay, no, that's fine. Yeah, we'll 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 we'll, we'll if this gets back on the the podcast, we'll we'll talk about that then. We'll have to have a whole dedicated section to what the heck is going on in this. <laughs> yeah, wait wait till you see the randomizer runs. Oh my god! <laughs> There's some pretty wacky stuff that goes on there, but uh... yeah, congrats to Alimra on this on the run. Um, looking forward to the sub one hour. Awesome. Uh, yeah, we have a few honorable mentions. We'll kind of read through them. There's a few that we're gonna we're gonna kind of highlight here, where uh, just to keep things rolling. Um, first of all, we have uh, a rare Gen two run, uh, Tepic getting ninth place with three sixteen oh nine. The next run I want to actually show is Fire Red Any Percent, which is the glitched category, but blindfolded by oh, Serpent. Yeah. Oh, this is a um, marathon. Is it? It seems like, yeah. Or maybe the... Yeah, I think it's just the layout that looks like. Oh. I mean, he went above and beyond for the blind proof. Uh, yeah, <laughs> showing the screens. <laughs> Definitely. I'm not sure if he's done other blindfolded runs. There's someone that's yes. done... Oh, okay. Ser yeah. Serpent has done quite a few. Mm. He's done a few HGSS blind yeah, runs. Yeah, I was thinking the HGSS, HGSS uh, any percent yeah, plus. Yeah. yeah, I've definitely seen his work. Uh, it's really cool. Um, yeah, uh, it's just really cool to see. Yeah, so we'll just we'll, I'll just go with it. And actually, what's the time here? We have a two twenty. That's not bad. That's like only an hour slower than. That's not bad at with all. With vision, so yeah, not not too bad. I mean, it's infinitely better than anyone else. I don't think I've ever done this blindfolded. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we'll uh, we'll move on. If anyone's interested, in the run, I'm sure you can find it online. We don't have too much time. We're actually going to talk about the next run as well, which is. Uh, I just need to make sure I mute this, so the sound doesn't come through. This is M Blue Magma doing a catch 'em all on Sapphire um, with glitches. Uh, seven hours, forty nine minutes. This is a run I need to go back and watch. I caught bits and pieces of it live, but uh, I know he mentioned about having a lot of new cool stuff cooked up lately because I know he's done a lot of RNG research and or not RNG research, but uh, glitch hunting research. Yeah. Um, especially with the mail stuff, and uh, it sounded like he had cooked something really good for the Safari. So I need to go back and watch the Safari section in particular, if not the whole run, just because uh, you know, you know, it's not every day you see a catch 'em all run on a game like sapphire 
Oh, this is the safari here. Um, I'm not exactly sure what he does though. Oh no, this is. About being is this safari? Maybe it's not. No. Corrupt a tile to be like a secret base entrance or something, so you can yeah. sneak into the safari zone and have all your normal equipment. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. But I think he also had like some really interesting like manips cooked out in the safari too, because there's a lot of really bad encounters in the safari if I remember right. Yeah. So he's he's obviously using master balls here, so you can probably he's probably duplicating them as well. So, oh, yeah, so he's like he's, he's ahead, in the safari, but like not actually like doing the safari like zone yeah. challenge thing. Okay. Right. Yeah. He's okay. not locked in the safari yeah. mechanics. He's kind yeah. of he went in the back door. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is he like act, like corrupting like mons that he wouldn't be able to find otherwise, or is it still just like No, I think he's just manipping the really hard to find ones, which is I think why he's doing a save and reset there. He's talking about how he had like an absolute wall of uh flow timers because I think in his setup he has like a like a vertical monitor in uh, in his setup somewhere, and I think he was talking about how if it was on like a like his horizontal monitor or something, you wouldn't be able to see like the lower offsets on it just because he had so many offsets for manipulating different things throughout the run. <laughs> well, vertical monitor wins. <laughs> That's wild. So yeah, he he had a lot of really interesting stuff that he was cooking throughout with all those um offsets and rng and the the male corruption stuff to corrupt sprites for i think it was a secret base is what he used to get in the back door somehow but <laughs> one one i definitely need to go back and watch yeah for sure <laughs> well that, that would be it probably Yeah, so we have also, um, just moving on, but just going through a few more of our notable or honorable mentions of the last couple of months, we have UG with yellow, 80% glitchless, 6th place, 154.28. Very solid time there. Um, Rastafari, a newer uh, newer runner to the community, uh, got fire and leaf green, 80% 3rd place, 135.13. So congrats to him on that. Um, not, not a lot of activity on the... Uh, the the glitched side uh, of the fire leaf green, but there's lots of lots of good runs up on the board. Uh, one thing I will say is I did see uh, Ananan got a fire leaf green any percent manipulus uh, world record a couple days ago. Oh, he did, yeah, and it was better than his manipped time. <laughs> it was better than his manipped time. I think oh. I think it skipped the bike. Oh that's yeah, thought, was what uh, I yeah, saw. that's yeah. that's something that Worcester yep. found. And yeah, Worcester on accident forgot to pick up the bike and just said screw it, and then turns out it, it turns out it's faster. faster it, yeah, turns out it was faster. So. I'm not sure if Ross did that. Let's see. No, he got the bike again. But you would actually you would skip getting the voucher, skip getting the bike, and that actually even though you're moving slower, the time you're losing to moving slower is made up for by the fact that you didn't have to detour for those for the bike voucher and the bike itself. So typically, yeah. Uh, you, I mean, it can be net slower if you get really unlucky with encounters because you have to fill up your uh, party with something. And usually you catch... Um, and you also catch a Spiro to trade for Farfetch'd. Well, you can just turn frame, right? Uh, I mean, you can, but I think running around is faster than turn framing in Fire Leaf Green. I might be wrong on that. Um, what was I going to say? I'm not sure, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, I know the yeah. bike is only like two frames faster. I was gonna say, yeah, like I feel like, like fire the, the green... bike is really not that much faster, so it doesn't surprise me that. The yeah, you might be right. I guess if you're hunting when you're hunting for Spiro specifically, yeah, the one that you're trading. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel that like makes fire sense. the green has like one of the smallest disparities between the bike speed and the running speed out of any yeah. game. <laughs> yeah, it's only like the, the yeah, because it, it's basically all slow gear. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's like the no acro bike in, yeah. in Holland, yeah. Yeah, super cool. If anyone wants to see like a sort of a, a marathon run of, of this, Worcester just did a one for an Australian marathon, which was I watched it. It was he explained everything really well. It is manipulous, mm -hmm. but uh, it's it's a really solid uh, showcase of the route with with commentary. So definitely recommend Manipt checking been, that out. I think Manipt has been kind of quiet too because um, they're trying to cook Twisted Spin yep. Abra yep. and catch. Which, if anyone knows any little thing about RNG in uh, fire the green how absolutely brutal it is yeah 
basically involves hitting at least two frame perfects back to back, but mm -hmm. yeah, which is like kind of unheard of for Pokemon speed running. But we're we're getting there. I think it'll be. I think it'll happen for sure <laughs> in the next maybe next year potentially. I mean, we're in platinum. We're down to a one frame window at thirty FPS for uh, initial gold exceed and two frame for work battle manip. That's the closest I could think of two frame perfects required for a minute. Yeah. All right. Well, next up we have um, Grogear, who has actually been like kind of silent in the public, but he was been he's been participating in a uh, a French Emerald tournament, and when doing that, he got a uh, a two thirty five thirty eight for uh, Emerald ninety percent glitches, which is third on the emulator boards, and then. And then uh, after that, we have, uh, you know, DS runs. We have Charlie with a um, HSS any percent manipulous world record to 209.27. And, and then, then, so, and then, and then, and then one, like, unlocked the bounties for for pretty much, like, there, there was, like, 10 oh, bounties yeah. I got unlocked because of um, he, he beat my record in HSS any percent manipulous. Uh, he did the low candy route where I... I still did the high candy route because I got that record during a race. So yeah, that's a oh. like a two minute cut on on my run. That's yeah, nice to see. And then literally like three hours ago, he got the record in Diamond and Pearl glitchless manipulous. Yeah, that that one's also like pretty highly contested. I'd, I'd say even more than the HSS record. Um, yeah, lately there's been a lot of GP glitchless manipulous for whatever reason. Lime's been on it for a while. I think he's finally off of it now. Yeah, yeah. Lime. Yeah, Lime was on it for a while. Icy was on it for quite a while. Yeah, after the bounty expired, it's just gonna. Yeah. People stop doing it, but yeah, Charlie just did it. Um. Yeah. And uh, I guess one more, a DS manipulous record for Raz with another black any percent, um, manipulous record. He's kind of like the only one who's really doing runs of it, but it's it's had a pretty good time right now. It's at three twenty two twenty seven. Uh well the puck route still. He deserves yeah. it since he cooked the whole manipulous little pup route. Yeah. Cut it from scratch pretty much. Mm -hmm. We have a few yeah. switch runs. Yeah we have uh, another another run by our, our host head bob. This is um, Isle of Armor Don't Get Urshifu with a 111.29, which is fourth place on the leaderboard, but only about 20 seconds or so off of record. So that one's another very hotly contested category at the top. Yeah, there's much less variance in this category versus Get Urshifu because there's no sort of XL or whatever. You still get um, EXP candies from the Crown Tundra, as you see, like I'm in the Crown Tundra right now. But. Um, there's much less of a requirement for sure. Um, so you can get a lot of runs uh, to the end game. So it's like very much more like an execution based run. It's, I mean, there's obviously still like a lot of RNG in which case, yeah. Um, like, yeah, my, this run probably could have recorded if I didn't get quick draw from um, oh, no. player three slow bro, but that's kind of like the name of the game a little bit. So just like, yeah, like the things that just happen. I, I don't really have a reason to continue grinding this category, but yeah. Um, it's very. I feel like it's a very much more palatable run than Get or Shifu if you like actually want to finish a lot of runs. Yep. So there's that. Yeah, I should also note that this is also on Shield, and the uh, I have the record for Shield on this category. So thank you for not continuing to run it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is my run is third, but it's only four seconds off of record. There's two runs ahead of me that are four, one and four seconds faster. So it's it is really tied up at the top here, like twelve seconds between the top four. So yeah, yeah, really fun category. Um, and then, what's uh, next? Conti continuing onwards, we got uh, some PLA runs. Yeah, we have a bunch uh, of them, actually. So we got uh, Truly, who did PLA for a little while, has 345.31, which is third place on the boards in English. Um, I don't know if we have any of these highlighted, but um, 
we have Agpack, who had... Yeah, I'll pull, Tr I'll pull Truly's time. We're run up now. Okay. Just so we can talk about that. Um, yeah, Agpack's time is 10 seconds worse. Uh, fourth place. If you look at the PLA boards, there actually is quite a big disparity between um, Halk, Shade, Halk and Shady, who are the top two, and then basically everybody else. Yeah, it's but like 10 minutes. <laughs> these two, Truly and Agpack, have been trying to make that gap a little bit smaller. It's a, it's, a, it's like a pretty insane gap. Um, no one has run PLA as much as those two, for sure. Um, pretty pretty high barrier to entry for that game. And then yep. also we have TPAT with a PLA any percent run as well. Um, 347.39. I think this is one of his first PBs on digital. I think he'd been running physical before this. Mm. Um, so there's that as well. And then uh, Agpac also got fourth place on the JPN boards as well uh, for PLA with a 341.34. And then after that, we have some Scarlet Violet runs. Um, Shu, uh, Shu Ah, uh, got a third place in Scarlet Violet Teal Mass JPN with a 233.13. Like we discussed before, the JPN boards have the new new game starting time, so it's a little bit longer, but that would be effectively 50 minutes longer than the English boards. Um, and then we have a any percent glitchless JPN run, third place from, pardon me, K Kageru Rune, the JPN runner, um, with a 524.32. And then after that, we have uh, some side games. Um, we have Sparkle Lantern, who, who goes by Sparkle now, actually, um, getting a fifth place in Coliseum, any percent, with a 330.25. I think this is one of his first PSR PVs in quite a while. So that's exciting to see. Um. And we have Amiibo getting a uh, catch Jirachi world record in Pinball, Ruby, and Sapphire uh, with a 3, 325. And moving on further, we have Eponymous. <laughs> eponymous, Eponymous. Thank you. Uh, eponymous getting uh, PMD Explorers of Skies, a bunch of world records. For uh, for the Wii U English boards, uh, we have recruit them all. No wonder mail English world record of three hour thirty nine hours <laughs> thirty one minutes and zero seconds. Um, we have English any percent no wonder mail in five hours sixteen minutes and thirty five seconds. Um, any percent Japanese no wonder mail in four hours fifty six minutes and forty eight seconds. And all special episodes in two hours, fifty-eight minutes, and thirty-one seconds. And then Eponymous also getting the PMD Explorers of Time world records uh, for JPN any percent, no wonder mail in four hours, forty-seven minutes, and fifty-eight seconds. And finally, the Beat Dark Rai. No Wonder Mail world record in 7 hours, 16 minutes, and 16 seconds. And then moving on past that, we have Babo uh, getting Rumble Blast any percent world record uh, on emulator with no passwords. Uh, 3 hours, 26 minutes, and 7 seconds. And uh, Zoriko getting console Rumble Blast any percent world record with passwords in three hours, 34 minutes, and 45 seconds. Um, and lastly, we have Etiquette getting Detective Pikachu returns any percent world record in two hours, 19 minutes, and 37 seconds. So congrats to all of those runners. And congrats to everybody else who we who's not listed here, and because there's way too many, way too way too many runs to cover. But congratulations to everybody who uh, may have gotten a PB in the last couple of months.
Um, next up, you want to talk about the marathons, Tucker? Yeah, sure. Um, so the marathons coming up in the month of May are going to be the animal anime speedrun festival. We have Toro Night doing TCG any percent glitchless on May third, fourteen thirty five, EST EST time. So that's two thirty five p.m. Uh, PSSMB doing Battle Revolution Stargazer Round 2 transfers on May 4th, um, 2.36 a.m. And then that No Star Wars Allowed, we have Iron. Is that you? That's that is me, yes. I'm running. That is you. It, it, it will yeah, actually yeah. be around the time. It'll be starting, if assuming, assuming we air this podcast at noon on the 4th, it will be starting about 40 minutes after the podcast starts. So once you're done watching the podcast, oh. head over to No Glitches Allowed and watch I'm my run. The, <laughs> I'm the culprit for why we're asyn- asynchronous today. <laughs> yeah, uh, go check that out. Uh, it's a really, really wacky run. So lots of weird stuff going on there. So Yeah, No Star Wars Allowed Marathon. Um, and uh, we have Action Role Playing Games Marathon Events. Desert Eagle 417 doing Scarlet and percent Glitchless on May 12th. Uh, five forty-one p.m. and too fast, too fabulous marathon. We have Jana Noli doing Puzzle League one-player stadium easy mode um, on May twenty-fifth at two forty-five p.m. and that's all we have for marathons. Yeah, great. So th- that pretty much uh, does us for today. Um, we got a couple other things. Um, the next podcast will be beginning of June. I will say I am away the first weekend of June, so we may be holding it the second weekend of June. TBD. We will uh, we'll decide, and uh, we need we'll try to promote that a bit more as well, so you guys know when the next one is. Um, and make sure you follow the guests TTS. And someone at this moment will be putting the command in chat. <laughs> and also follow the host, myself, Tucker, and Headbob. Well, someone will be putting that command in chat right now. <laughs> and make sure, make sure you follow us on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it these days, um, at PSR Podcast. I don't know if we actually have tw- been tweeting or Xing that much, but uh, make sure you... F- Make sure you follow us. Um, we'll try to get it for this podcast. Yeah, we'll 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 yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll try to make that happen. So, uh, yep. thanks again, TTS, for joining us. That was a great discussion, and uh, best of luck yeah, uh, with the grind moving forward and uh, with GDQ. Yeah, I'm looking forward. I hope you all tune in to uh, Twitch.tv/slash Games Done Quick to watch the amazing content and raise good money for charity. All right. That'll be it. So we'll see you next time. Everybody uh, have a good one and we'll see you soon.